Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about the Sun and Planet epicyclic air trains and also we will be discussing a problem in this one. Here you can see the animation of Sun and Planet epicyclic air train. Here there will be a central uh, rotating gear and this gear will be known as Sun gear and here uh, in the right side also you can see the central gear will be known as the Sun gear. And around this Sun the another other gears will be rotating those are known as planet like Sun and Planet system. And so here this will be the planet gear. So here you can see three planet gears on each figure. This is the first planet gear, second and third. Each of these planet gears are having similar motion. Here you can see the planet gears are this yellow colored which are continuously moving. And this planet gear is in mesh with the sun gear at this point. And at the other point it is mesh with this blue colored gear which is known as ring gear or annulus these are known as annulus or ring gear so here you can see the in right side as in brown color so if you are seeing the sun gear and planet gear are externally uh, are having externally cut gears but this ring or internal are, uh, or annulus are actually internal gears so these are having internal tooth and all the planet gears are carried or connected by an element called arm here in this one this gray colored element is known as arm or these are known as planet carrier arm or planet carrier so in the right figure this is shown by this element that is rotating that is this will be known as arm so these are the elements of the sun and planet epicyclic gear train if you are looking on the left side you can see in this animation the arm is always stationary or you can see this arm is fixed that is this element this grey colored element arm is always lying at that position and that means arm is fixed and if you are looking onto the right side here you can see that this ring gear or annular gear is fixed and other elements the sun planet and planet carrier are having relative motion so in the right side here the ring gear or annulus is fixed so whenever you are solving the problems by forming the table for this epicyclic gear train we will be seeing how to form or formulate this table uh, for the sun and planet epicyclic while solving a problem we will be making use of this condition so left animation is showing the case where arm is fixed and right animation is showing the case where annulus is fixed so now uh, we will be solving a problem from this one and while solving problems you will have to represent or in question also directly they will be giving the sketch of the gear train so from that you have to understand this is representing the sun and planet gear train so this sun and planet epicyclic gear train can be represented by this figure you, here I am, I am showing you two sketches either this one or this one is showing the same sun and planet epicyclic gear train because here I am showing three planets differences these are representing the planets here the motion of each of this planet gears will be same so you can represent it by this this figure or you can take only one planet and this one is known as arm or the planet carrier so here also you can simplify this as the single arm so both figures are representing the same case so if you are seeing this one is the ring or annulus so this annulus you can ring or annulus so here also this is the showing the ring or annulus and this one and here the central element is actually the sun so here this element is sun and this one is also sun and here the, this one is the planet gears so here you can see this is the planet gears here all the three planet gears are represented so all are representing the planet gears and in the right side this is actually the planet gears and here you can see this uh, arm which is connecting the all the planet gears so this is known as arm or planet carrier and so this is also known as arm or planet carrier so in uh, while solving problems these kind of figures will be given in question so you will have to understand that this is representing a sun and planet epicyclic gear train so this is the sketch of this uh, kind of gear trains so now based on this one we will be solving a problem so here a question is given in an epicyclic gear train which is consisting of three gears a b and c as shown in figure so here a is actually the term given for this ring or annulus gear and the central gear C is the name that is given for the sun gear and B is the name that is given for the planet gear that we are having and here arm is given by this name arm is EF here the gear is having 
70 to internal teeth we are already knowing the annulus is having internal teeth and number of internal teeth is equal to 72 ta is equal to 72 and gear c has 32 teeth that means tc equal to 32 teeth but the number of teeth on b is not given our first step will be to evaluate the number of teeth the gear b meshes with both a and c gear b is the planet gears that are coming here so planet gears are having external cut teeth so that will be meshing with the uh, teeth on the central sun gears e and also it is having a mesh with the internal teeth of the ring gear or annular gear a and here arm ef is connecting the centers of rotation of sun and planet which makes the rotation of this planet on and around this uh, sun gear and uh, it is uh, its speed is given the arm is rotating at a speed of 18 rpm its direction is not specified and we will be taking this direction as clockwise and this will be taken as positive and all the speeds will be uh, found all the speed of other elements will be found according to this one and also another condition is given here gear a is fixed so this is another condition or another boundary condition you have to use after formulating the table and the question is to determine the speed of the gear so first step will be here we will be evaluating the number of teeth on gear b so if you are seeing so from this center if you are moving up to this much distance this is actually representing the uh, radius of gear annular gear a that you can call it as ri and this can be found in another way if you are moving from this point to this one then this is representing the radius of sun gear c that is rc and this is representing the diameter of planet gear that is db so you can write this ra is equal to rc plus diameter of b or you can write it as diameter of a by 2 is ra this is equal to dc by 2 plus db you can write and you are knowing that for gears the diameter you can write it as module into number of teeth and here module for all these meshing gears are same because a is meshing with the b and b is meshing with the annulus a so their module should be same so this common module we can take so this da can be written as m into ta divided by 2 this will be becoming and this is equal to m into tc divided by 2 plus m into tb of this two values are known this tc you are having number of teeth on c is 32 and number of teeth on this annular gear that is 72 so from this you can evaluate the value of number of teeth on b tb the, if you are solving correctly then you will be getting the number of teeth on this gear as 20 so the number of gears on the uh, number of teeth on the gear b will be 20 so tb is equal to 20 and with this one we will be formulating the table or uh, required for solving this epicyclic gear train so this will be the table which is required for solving or finding the velocity of different elements in first column we will be having the condition of motion and next we will be having the speed of elements here we are having four elements in total central at the center center we are having the sun gear next we are having the planet gear which is coming in mesh here sun and planet are making external meshing or they are having externally cut teeth and finally this planet is mating with the gear a called which is annulus and that is having uh, the internally cut teeth so they are having a uh, internally cut teeth and there is an element which is connecting this uh, centers of sun and planet which are known as planet carrier or arm so here always first the speed of elements will be reserved for this arm that is ef next we will be making the column for this sun that is coming at this center the centrally rotating gear will be coming here and next column will be for whichever element is meshing with the, this c here c is meshing with the b so this column will be for this planet b and finally this planet b is meshing with this uh, internally cut teeth that means annulus or ring gear so the last column will be for annulus now we will be giving the different conditions of motion and we will be uh, formulating the expression for speed of the element so here first we will be assuming the arm or the planet carrier is fixed arm is fixed and here we will be giving the central element that is here central element is sun or c and this will be assumed to have a rotation clockwise so i will be giving 1 rpm in clockwise i will be giving motion so 
here clock is direction uh, the rotation is taken as positive so this value will be 1 rpm and according to which i will be finding filling the right side so speed of arm is zero as it is fixed and sun c is rotating clockwise so sign is positive and magnitude is 1 next we have to find the magnitude of speed of this uh, gear b or planet so whenever the gear c is rotating clockwise the gear b will be rotating anti clockwise since it is having anti clockwise rotation the sign will be negative next we have to calculate the magnitude of the speed of gear b here gear b and the sun c are making meshing so you can write the omega b divided by omega c is equal to inverse ratio of the number of teeth that is tc divided by t b here you can write omega b is equal to tc divided by tb into omega c here already we have given value for the c or sun gear omega c which is one magnitude only i am taking direction is clockwise so it is positive then omega b will be tc by tb already you are knowing b is rotating in anti clockwise then value will be equal to minus tc divided by tb now we have to fill the last row that is corresponding to annulus so if you are looking here the uh, gear b that is planet is making meshing with the outer annulus gear and if you are observing the planet is having external teeth externally cut teeth and annulus is having internally cut teeth so in such a meshing the direction of rotation will be same that means if gear b is rotating in the anti clockwise direction then the uh, annulus or will also be rotating in the anti clockwise direction since it is anti clockwise this will be having a sign of minus next we will we have to find the magnitude so for finding the magnitude the annulus is named as a it is making meshing with the, the planet b so omega a by omega b that can be written in the inverse ratio or as tb by ta and here you can write this omega a is equal to tb by ta into omega b already you are having omega b here so this can be written as that is omega a of annulus we are finding this is equal to tb by ta into instead of omega b i can write tc by tb into omega c so already we have taken the speed of uh, the sun as 1 rpm magnitude only are taking then this remaining magnitude will be given by this expression here this tb and tb will be getting cancelled and finally this will be giving you the expression of tc by ta already we are knowing the annulus is rotating in anti clockwise hence minus will be coming and remaining things will be equal to tc by ta and now we will be writing the second condition of motion here also the arm is fixed and here instead of giving 1 rpm in clockwise for sun here sun say will be giving uh, given with a rotation of general that is plus x instead of 1 a magnitude of x rpm or unknown is given that is also given in clockwise so it is positive so here uh, we will be writing the speed of elements arm is fixed it is zero instead of this uh, plus 1 it will be coming plus x and this term will be minus tc by tb into x and this will be minus tc divided by ta into x and for the final motion or in the last column we will be writing the final condition of motion so so far arm was fixed and here arm will be given a motion now arm is considered to be rotating in clockwise direction we are assuming and that uh, motion will be given with an speed of y rpm plus y is coming since it is given a rotation clockwise so since arm is having now some speed and that value is will be equal to plus y and all that y we have to add for other elements also so this will be becoming plus y plus x this will be equal to plus y minus tc by tb into x and this will be plus y minus tc by ta into x so this last column will be used for solving the problem so here if you are observing so this is the value that we are requiring so if you are observing the speed of arm ef will be given by y the speed of sun gear c will be given by y plus x 
the speed of planet B will be given by y minus tc by tb into x and speed of annulus will be given by y minus tc by ta into x. Now we will be looking for the conditions or the boundary conditions given in the question to find the value of x and y and also we are having the all the number of teeth on A, B and C and from this we can find the unknown thing. So here in the question the conditions are given. Here I, am, I have listed all the uh, velocities. These are given for the arm. This is given for the sun gear and this is for the planet omega b that we are getting from the final draw of the table that we have formulated and last one is for the annulus or ring. So now we will be applying the boundary condition. Here it is mentioned that the arm EF is making rotation about center of A at 18 rpm. Here we will be taking it as clockwise and for that we will be taking it as positive. So y value is equal to plus 18 and also the gear A is fixed that means ring gear is fixed means this value will be equal to 0. So you can solve this uh, first equation that is y equal to 18 and last equation y minus tc by ta equal ta into x equal to 0 then you can find the value of uh, x and y. So if you are solving this will be getting y equal to tc by ta into x and this will be giving you x is equal to y into ta divided by tc then this will be equal to 18 into 72 divided by 32 if you are solving you will be getting the value of x s then here you will be getting the value of x s 40.5 you will be getting and now we are having the value of x and y in the question it is asked to find the uh, speeds of gear B and C. So here you can substitute the value to find the speed of gear B you can substitute values in this one. So y value is 18 minus number of teeth on C is 32 divided by mm, TB. TB we have evaluated which is 20 into x value is 40. 0.5 and then you will be getting this omega b that is speed of the planet gears s then we will be getting the value as around minus 46.8 rpm you will be getting so the speed of planet gear will be minus 46.8 rpm means this is rotating in the counter clockwise direction as it is having minus sign and here you can find the speed of sun gear c also for that you can substitute the value of y and x so y is equal to plus 18 or 18 plus x is equal to 40.5 so x plus 40.5 will be equal to 58.5 rpm here it is plus means this one is rotating in the clockwise direction so these are the answers the speed of gear b or the planet gear will be equal to minus 46.8 means it is rotating in the anti-clockwise direction uh, with the 46.8 rpm and the central sun gear will be rotating at 58.5 rpm in the clockwise direction. So this is the complete solution of the uh, problem where we are dis or having the uh, sun and planet epicyclic gear train. Hope you understood this problem and in the next video we will be solving a problem from the compound epicyclic gear train or compound sun and planet epicyclic gear train.